Today I'll be sharing how I absolutely transformed my body and built an aesthetic physique over my last 6 years of training. Because we all know how beneficial it is to look like an absolute Greek god. Obviously you're gonna look sick and attract more gym bros and perhaps even a bit of women. But man, this lifestyle is just so much more than that. The confidence boost it gives you, the high quality people you meet in the gym, the great friendships you make and the ability to discipline yourself and actually live the way you want. So what actually makes a physique aesthetic? After looking at a concerning amount of shirtless dudes on the internet, I came to the realization that there are three main factors that make a physique aesthetically pleasing to the eye. The first one is having a V taper look to your body. That means having wider shoulders than your waist and if you want to get unnecessarily and oddly specific, it's a shoulder to waist ratio of about 1.6. The V-shape is important because it gives you that superhero look. Women are attracted to the V-shape body the same way as men attracted to women's hourglass body. Don't ask me how this shit works, our monkey brain is just wired this way. A quick note before we move on to the second factor, please don't be a nerd and stress about numbers and genetics. I'm gonna be completely honest here, my genetics are pretty trash, but I was still able to get a decently aesthetic physique. You need to put in effort for the first few years to actually see your genetic potential. So if you're just starting out in the gym, you have no authority to judge your genetics because you don't actually know your potential. Okay, so the second factor is something called the shreds, aka looking like a human cheese grater. Your body fat plays a huge role on your aesthetics. Most people won't look aesthetic above 15% body fat, simply because the additional body fat will be stored around your waist area and it will ruin your V-shape. Also, the additional layer of fat will be stored around your stomach and it will cover your abs, making them less visible. So, if you're above 15% body fat, the solution is pretty simple. You just need to lose some fat, aka go into a caloric deficit, eating less calories than you burn. And the easiest way to do this is to eat less calories. No, but for real, just eat less calorie dense foods and up your activity levels to put it simple. If you want the best, most accurate results, I recommend tracking your calories and macros. I like to track my steps to analyze my daily activity levels to make sure I hit them. If I'm on a fat loss phase, I do anywhere between 15 to 20k steps and if I'm on a gaining phase, I do anywhere between 8 to 10,000 steps per day. If you want a full guide on how to eat to gain muscle and lose fat, you can watch my full diet guide video but keep in mind that you can still look pretty awful even if you're below 15% body fat and skinny. In that case you'd need to bulk and gain muscle which brings us to the third factor which is taking up the right muscles. Developing the right muscles can make the difference between you looking anorexic to you looking like a stage ready bodybuilder. Training your whole upper and lower body is absolutely crucial to avoid any imbalances in building a well-rounded physique but for the sake of this video we're going to focus on the four main muscle groups that if trained properly can make you look like an absolute Greek god. The first one is chest. It's a rule. If you want to attract a girl, you want to have larger breasts than her. Also, something just looks off when your chest is small and the rest of your body is huge. Most of the advice on the internet will tell you to focus on the upper chest to build a bigger looking chest. But this is just some generic ass advice that won't work for everyone. In my opinion, the lower portion of the chest is just as important as the upper portion. And my lower chest became a bit underdeveloped when I focused on my upper chest. So the absolute best exercises for the chest are going to be your classic pressing movements, like your classic barbell and dumbbell pressing movements, like the bench press or the incline press. And for the best isolation exercises, I recommend doing some type of a fly movement, like the simple cable flies, or I would recommend doing the incline cable fly. The second muscle group is shoulders. If you have small shoulders, you will look like you never touched a weight in your entire life. Big, nice and round shoulders will give you that wider look for your V taper and will make you look like an absolute unit. To get those 3D more plates, more dates looking delts, you'd need to focus on your side delts and on your rear delts. Those motherfuckers literally responsible for the aesthetics of your delts. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about the front delts as they get enough training volume from all the pushing exercises. For the side delts, I like to go BDSM mode and do weird cable exercises like the seated crucifix cable lateral raise.
or just a regular cable raise if you're not feeling kinky. And if you have this machine at your gym, you're a lucky bastard because the pump out I got after this one was fucking stupid. For the rear delts, I usually do the reverse cable flies, or if you have the reverse peg deck machine, you can just do that one instead. The third muscle group is lats. They literally create your V taper. When people hear about the lats, they automatically think about the back, but the lats are also visible from the front of your body, creating that V shape and making you look aesthetic. Lats are a pretty tricky muscle to feel while training, and my best advice for feeling your lats is pulling with your elbows and squeezing those elbows to your body to actually engage those lats and feel them. When I first started training, I had a really hard time feeling my lats, so hopefully that helps. I found that the best exercises for the lats are the weighted chin up slash pull up, the high row slash pull down, the close grip row and the lat pull over. The fourth aesthetic muscle group is abs. Everyone likes a good set of abs but I see so many fucking people that skip them and don't train them and then they complain and cry that they don't have visible abs even though they're pretty lean. So forget about the advice of abs are made in the kitchen, abs are not made in the kitchen man. You need to actually train your abs to make them visible like any other muscle, like it's simple fucking logic. Like if I had a dollar for every time I heard the advice that abs are made in the kitchen, you don't need to train them, I would probably be in Bali in my mansion tanning naked with my balls out. One of my biggest mistakes was listening to this advice and when I finally got lean, I realized that my abs are fucking awful and that they are barely visible. Nowadays I usually do only one exercise for the abs, it is either the weighted full sit up or the hanging leg raises. Those exercises are the best bang for your buck and will train the essential parts of your core. Some people claim that the full sit up is dangerous for your lower back and yes it is dangerous for your lower back if you do them like those high school under one minute tests and autistically hit the floor hard with your back every single rep. This exercise is completely completely safe if you do it in a controlled way with the appropriate weight. So combine ab training with fat loss and you will see a lot more definition in your abs. Again, this whole four aesthetic muscle groups thing doesn't mean you need to avoid training the rest of your body. This just means that you need to focus a tiny bit more on those muscles in order to build an aesthetic physique. Of course, don't fucking skip legs, I actually think that the quads are extremely aesthetic and they even almost made the list, but honestly, 90% of time people won't see your, your quads. But still, don't you fucking dare skip legs. Okay, so to not bluff and drag out this video, I'm gonna put a bullet point list of what to do in order to build those muscles in the most efficient and effective way possible. Eating a slight calorie surplus just a 200 to 300 calories above your maintenance is more than enough, eating enough protein per day, approximately 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, eating a nutrient dense diet, quality recovery, 8 to 10 hours of sleep, staying hydrated, drinking plenty of water, choosing the right exercises, staying consistent with training, training the same muscle group at least twice per week, doing 10 to 20 hard working sets per muscle group per week. Mind muscle connection and the last one is progressive overload. Progressively overloading compound lifts aka adding more weight, sets and reps to your multi-joint exercises like the bench press, the pull-ups and the squat. Okay so let's cover real quick where people mess up the most and miss out on gains. They usually get obsessed either with mind muscle connection or with progressive overload. They either go into powerlifting mode or they become pump goblins chasing after those pumps. I rarely see people that actually do both. And yes, I've made this mistake, because of this my chest was literally non-existent because I focused on progressively overloading the bench press, I haven't even felt my chest even though I did the exercise with absolutely perfect form. Only when I took a step back, started feeling my chest and combined mind muscle connection with progressive overload, I developed larger breasts than the average adult woman. I fixed this issue by adding just a light pre-pump exercise with two easy sets before my main compound movement. So if I have the bench press for example as the main movement of the day, I would add push-ups or cable flies to really focus on those muscle muscles contracting and and getting a good feel for those mind muscle connection. Also a quick thing that helped me is squeezing and contracting the chest before lifting the bar and you'll be surprised how well you're gonna feel your chest after doing this. Okay so let's talk about cardio for aesthetics. 
You don't need cardio to lose fat, but it can certainly help you burn more calories, which can put you easier into a caloric deficit. But keep in mind that overdoing cardio will hurt your gains, underdoing cardio will hurt your health in the long term. The data shows you need 150 minutes of steady state cardio to minimize any heart related diseases. Steady state cardio is like an intense walk or a light drug for example. You should still be able to breathe from your nose. If your goal is to lose fat or build muscle easily, you should never neglect sleep and recovery. Sleep and recovery is the most underrated thing when it comes to building a good physique. Sleeping more will give you more energy to push your hardest in the gym and set new personal records. While sleeping, our body also releases essential anabolic hormones to build muscle like testosterone and IGF-1. A lack of sleep will also make it hard to lose fat and maintain as much muscle as possible during your fat loss phase because not sleeping enough will put you into a catabolic state. Also, a lack of sleep increases the hormone ghrelin which signals your brain to be more hungry and eat more food and it decreases the hormone leptin which makes you feel full after your meals. 6 hours of sleep, one cut it, 7 hours, you'll be still missing out, 8 to 10 hours is the sweet spot. So yeah, don't miss out on sleep. I know this is all still pretty confusing, even though this video is absolutely packed with knowledge, you're still going to fuck up. And that's okay, because this is how we learn. The only way you're gonna get things right is through years of experience. I know this because I went through it all. If you want to skip this trial and error phase and not waste any time, I'm now offering online coaching. If you're interested to be coached, you can DM me the word yes sir on Instagram. I'll leave my tag here. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, we leave a like and share this video. It helps out this channel. Also subscribe so you don't miss out any valuable content. And most importantly, don't forget to wake the fuck up.